In this episode, we chase a dramatic thunderstorm. We find an incredibly rare white lion. We experience more rain and we find cheetah, leopard and African wild dog. After leaving Lataba at the end of the previous episode, we followed the main tar road south, eagerly anticipating what Satara had in store for us. We stopped to admire a beautifully flowing Olifants River along the way, searching for wildlife and enjoying the landscape. After checking in at Satara, we immediately left to drive the S100, a stunning road east of Satara well known for lion. We found lion early on the drive, close to the Shibotwana waterhole, but unfortunately there were too many cars and we decided to leave and go back to camp early. The clouds were building and more rain was coming. It was great to finally see some predators though. We were finally in my favorite part of Kruger. So this morning I'm out, I'm sitting at the Giravana Dam near the Insamani Dam. I heard some lions roaring now, I think further north, which I'm going to check out. But otherwise there's some Ellie's around here, some Impala, some birds. Hoping for some clearing in the weather, but at the moment it's looking pretty cloudy. Uh, I think it's a lot of fog as well, so it's moving pretty fast. There's some colour in the clouds just in front of me. So I've checked on the sightings board. As much as you can trust that sightings board, there's a lot of predators seen around, lots of lion and leopard and cheetah as well. Apparently there's a cheetah with some cubs in the area, but you never know, we'll see if we can find them. But um, this morning I'm heading off to the Timbavati picnic site, that area, uh, we'll see what we can see there. But until then, we'll chat to you soon. Finding the white lion just south of Satara was definitely a highlight for the trip. I've spent almost 40 years in the bush and these are the very first photographs I've taken of a white lion. We spent the next day or so traversing the area around Satara. We had some good sightings but another highlight was chasing a dramatic thunderstorm and photographing a massive herd of elephants in the rain.
Morning, I'm currently driving the S126. I uh, left Satara this morning at 4.30. It's our last morning at Satara. I bumped into some lions, not far out of camp. There was three, three lions in the road, but there was a lot of vehicles, so uh, I left it. I'm going down the S126 this morning, and it looks like I'm the first vehicle to go through this road uh, since the rain yesterday. Uh, that storm yesterday was incredible. But this morning I think I'm going to try and take photos of some animals and not, not landscapes. It's hard to ignore such a crazy storm like that. Um, so last morning at Satara, we're going to Lower Sabi today. I'm going to go down the S126 this morning. I uh, haven't seen, I've seen some general game, but nothing, uh, nothing out the ordinary so far. Yeah, Satara's been good. There's been uh, some good sightings, some good times. Um, but yeah, let's see what this morning brings. The rest of the morning was fairly quiet. I did find a lioness with some small cubs near the Valfordine's waterhole, but they were in thick bush and difficult to photograph. I made my way back to Satara via the Giravana waterhole, my favorite waterhole in the whole park. I found some good general game there, and I managed to capture a few decent photographs of some impala, baboon, and of a fishing heron. I'm fairly happy with the results from our stay at Satara. I really enjoyed the aesthetic of the images with the tall grass. Tall grass, of course, makes finding subjects extremely difficult, but I enjoy the challenge. Although I didn't capture anything portfolio worthy, the sightings were good, albeit in less than ideal light. But that's why I love photography. In any weather, there is always something to create, something to photograph in a different way. But for me, above everything, just being out in the bush is enough. Satara was great. It's always sad leaving Satara, but at least we were still in the park for another five nights. Good morning. I am driving near Loisabi this morning. We've been here for two nights. We leave today for Bachendorf. Low Sabi and the Crocodile Bridge area are absolutely teeming with elephants. I am falling over elephants left, right and center. The amount of bull elephants walking in the road and causing a bit of traffic is... <laughs> it's quite crazy. Like, like, there's like literally elephants everywhere. I'm currently on the S122 just going around the Mlondozi area. This morning's sunrise looked quite promising but it's fogged over now. It's quite thick. So visibility... Probably about a two kilometers. Yeah, it's incredibly dull this morning. Yesterday we managed to find some lion and some wild dog actually on the main crocodile bridge, Lower Sabi Tar Road. Uh, there was five or six dogs. That was quite cool to see. Sunset Dam's full. Lots of hippo, lots of crocodiles, lots of birds. It's a nice place to go park off, but. Yeah, we've done some nice drives. Uh, again, there's just so many elephants around. Try to find some leopard. I haven't had many leopard on this trip. Anyway, still good to be here, obviously. But yeah, let's carry on and let's see what we can find. Probably more elephant. <laughs> this video is just going to be elephants. All you're going to see is elephants, no other animals. <laughs> but anyway, I'll check in with you guys just now. I found on this trip, um, it's like any Kruger trip, there's a lot of visitors, a lot of uh, people staying over and day visitors. And when you come to these camps down in the south, it can be insanely busy with cars. Yesterday going to Crocodile Bridge to get petrol, um, I must have passed, I don't know, 150 cars coming in. Uh, the queue at the gate was crazy. So what I try and do, I had to go to Croc Bridge yesterday to get fuel because the Lower Sabi fuel station burnt down. But um, what I do is I just stick to the dirt roads and sort of the, the unpopular dirt roads. You know, like Satara, the S100, it doesn't matter what time of year that road is always busy but if you go down something like the s126 or you know those types of roads it's a lot quieter so this morning i've seen no cars i've had this whole place to myself um, i know if lower sabi is it's packed it's full um, but you know you come down these these back dirt roads and and it's a much better experience than going on the popular roads yeah you might see you might pick up a lot more game you know a lot more visitors going through the area They'll pick up all the sightings and then you get to see them, but then you get to see them with a bunch of cars and that's not fun. 
I would rather sit with a, a Rufus Nate Lark or a European Roller by myself than watch lines with 50 other cars. So the less people the better I say. But um, yeah, about to head into the fog here. Um, it's really, really looking good this morning. I'll trade fog, fog for a good sunrise or good light any day. Um, so yeah, let's see what happens. The area around the Sabi River is beautiful. I really enjoyed the morning drive I had in the fog and I always feel privileged to find wild dog. Elephants were around every corner. I love photographing elephants just as well as they were indeed my main subjects for a few days. I like the black and white conversion on some of these photos. Stripping away color can sometimes create such a different mood. Bachendal produced some amazing sightings, although in difficult conditions for photography. The predators put on a spectacular show for us. We also had our fair share of rain, with some incredible rainbows as the storm cleared. Kruger was incredible. Its wildlife and landscapes have always been close to my heart. It enriches my soul, and I find my home here. I'm happy with the images I captured on the trip, rounding off an incredible 17 nights in the park. Thank you so much for watching and sharing in the story behind our 17 night trip to the Kruger National Park.